Bode plots help us understand how the system responds to a particular frequency. For example, we pass a 100 Hz signal through a system. We might see a change in the gain and in the phase of the signal. Bode plot tells us exactly that with the help of gain versus frequency and the phase versus frequency plot across the entire frequency spectrum. The way we find these plots is by substituting s equal to j omega in a transfer function. For example, if a transfer function is g of s equal to 1 upon s plus 1, then g of j omega would be 1 upon j omega plus 1. And now we can find the magnitude and phase of this complex number. But before we do that, let us see why we substitute s equal to j omega and not include the sigma term. In real life systems, you may always see damped oscillations and that means sigma, the damping factor is negative and the poles would lie in the left half plane. If we would have a positive damping factor, then the function would blow up to infinity since it's a growing exponential and this would be an unstable system. So, sigma only damps the amplitude of the signal and does not change its frequency. Therefore, when we want to understand the frequency response of a system, we are not really concerned with the damping factor as long as it lies in the left half plane. Hence, we will substitute sigma equal to 0 or s equal to j omega in the transfer function. Let us find the Bode plot of a simple RC circuit. In the last video, we found the output to input transfer function to be 1 upon 1 plus SCR. If you are not an electrical engineer, don't worry. Just think that the transfer function is of the form of 1 upon 1 plus s by omega naught, where omega naught is 1 by CR. This is also called the normalized form as transfer function becomes 1 when s is equal to 0. Now, we will substitute s equal to j omega and find the gain and phase of this complex number. For any complex number, we can find the magnitude or gain by taking square root of real part square plus imaginary part square and calculate phase by taking tan inverse of imaginary by real part. But solving g of j omega is not that straightforward since it's not in simple real plus imaginary form. So in order to solve it, we check out different ranges of omega. We first consider the case when omega is much much less than omega naught. We can ignore the second term in the denominator compared to 1 and hence the gain becomes 1. In a Bode plot, frequency on the x-axis is plotted in log scale and the gain is in decibels. This is very important to understand. The x-axis is the frequency just drawn in a log scale, whereas the y-axis is the decibel value of the gain. To convert any magnitude to decibels, we have to take log of its value and multiply by 20. To know more about the origin of decibel unit, I will leave a link in the description. To give a few examples, gain of 1 corresponds to 0 dB. Similarly, gain of 10 corresponds to 20 dB. In our example, gain becomes 0 dB and we will draw it on the plot. Then let us take the case for omega much much greater than omega naught. We can ignore 1 in the denominator and the expression reduces to minus j omega naught by omega. The gain is omega naught by omega or omega by omega naught power minus 1. To find its decibel value, we will take 20 log 10 of this value and it turns out to be minus 20 log omega by omega naught. What does the graph for this gain look like? To understand that, let us substitute some values. At omega equal to omega naught, gain would be 0 dB. At omega equal to 10 times omega naught, gain would be minus 20 dB. And if we go a decade higher again, at omega equal to 100 omega naught, we get minus 40 dB. So we see it is a straight line plot. Even though this is a log function, since it's drawn in a log scale, we see a straight line with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. We still need to find what happens near omega naught. For this, we can just substitute omega equal to omega naught. In this case, we can solve for the gain which comes out to be 1 by root 2 or minus 3 dB. This is what the complete gain plot would look like. We can do the same thing for the phase plot. We will consider three scenarios. Omega much less than omega naught, omega much greater than omega naught and omega equal to omega naught. And it turns out that for a pole, the phase changes by minus 90 degrees. Pause here if you want to take a look at the calculations. But we really don't need to remember these calculations. The more important point is, what is the inference from these plots? Well, we know that an RC circuit is a low pass filter. We can see from our gain plot that the gain is 0 dB or magnitude 1 for lower frequencies and the gain is attenuated for higher frequencies, just like a low pass filter would do. Point to remember here is that, 
A pole causes a drop in gain of 20 dB per decade for frequencies greater than pole frequency and the phase changes by minus 90 degrees. Let us look at a zero now. Consider the case of a transfer function 1 plus s by omega naught. If we rewrite it as 1 upon 1 upon 1 plus s by omega naught, then a zero is nothing but 1 upon pole. Now, division becomes subtraction in log scale. So gain of a zero is exactly negative of a pole in decibel scale. Incidentally, the phase also turns out to be negative value of the pole. Phase of a zero is tan inverse omega by omega naught, which can be written as minus tan inverse of minus omega by omega naught, which is equal to minus of a phase of a pole. Let us draw the Bode plot. We just need to take the negative of the gain and phases that we saw earlier. So we can remember that zero leads to an increase in gain at a rate of 20 dB per decade and the phase increases by 90 degrees just opposite of a pole. What if we have a pole and a zero in the transfer function or if we have multiple poles and zeros? One way to draw Bode plots would be to use a tool like MATLAB but we can make use of asymptotic functions and draw Bode plots by hand. For example, take the gain plot of a pole. I can approximate this Bode plot by using two straight lines. First line is a 0 dB line till the corner frequency omega naught and then a line of minus 20 dB per decade from there. For phase, there are multiple ways to draw this asymptote. The one I prefer is the following. The phase starts decreasing at a decade lower at omega naught by 10 up to a decade higher at 10 omega naught. Note that these are just approximations of the real Bode plot, but they work very well when we have to do calculations by hand. Let us check out another transfer function with one zero and two poles. What we can actually do is Add the Bode plots of individual poles and zeros as logarithmic operation allows us to do that. Let us plot the gain for the zero at 100 radians per second. Now we will plot the gain for the pole at 10 radians per second and then for the pole at 1000 radians per second. To add all these up, just split the plots into different regions and then sum it. We will get the gain plot that looks like this. We can also add phase asymptotes of these poles and zeros to get the phase plot. I will leave that to you as an exercise. In this way, we can easily draw a complex Bode plot by hand. Till now we have seen how to draw Bode plots for a single pole, a single zero and a combination of them. But let us see how to draw Bode plots for a second order system. Let us see the example of a well known spring mass damper system. The change in position of the mass to an impulse input is a transfer function of second order in nature. Let us say for the sake of this example m equal to 1, k equal to 1 and b equal to 1. Hence the transfer function is 1 upon s square plus s plus 1. Now we factor this denominator into its roots and find out that this system has two imaginary poles. Till now we had drawn Bode plots for poles and zeros lying on the real axis. But how do we plot the transfer function of a system with imaginary poles and zeros? Well we can compare it to the standard form which looks like this. We will substitute s equal to j omega in this equation and now the idea remains the same. We will see the response for omega much less than omega naught and then for omega much greater than omega naught and then for omega equal to omega naught. I am not going into the mathematical simplifications cause we would never use them in practice but let us see what is the result that we get. For omega much less than omega naught the gain is 0 dB just like a real pole case and the phase is also 0 degrees. For omega much greater than omega naught the gain rolls over at minus 40 dB per decade since it now has two poles and the phase reaches minus 180 degrees. But what happens at omega equal to omega naught? We get a gain of q or q decibels. And interestingly, this q can take any value. What that means is our Bode plot will depend on the value of q. And this has big implications on our system. For very high values of q, the system has high oscillations or resonance and overshoot. At q equal to 0.7, we have the critically damped case which means the fastest response without overshoot. And for q less than that, we get the over damped case which means the response has a long rise time. We will understand this further with examples in future. For the phase plot, q value determines how steep is the transition from 0 to minus 180 degrees. What we should remember is that a second order system rolls off at minus 40 dB per decade, the response depends on q and the phase changes by 180 degrees. So, now we have understood what a Bode plot is and in the next video we will see how to get useful information from this Bode plot and how it helps us in tuning a closed loop control system. See you next time.